Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at the let function in Excel. The let function is one of the newer functions in Excel and it's only available in Microsoft 365. But before we jump into that, please take a minute to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the bell icon so you will get a notice whenever I put out a new video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also find me at any of the social media sites you see here. So now let's get into today's topic. So here's our scenario. I have a table here and the table name is called table underscore sales data. And in that table, I have 110 rows of data that have different salespeople, the different models and the revenue they sold for each one of those. And what I want to determine is what kind of prize they get. If they sold over five million, they get gold. Four is silver, two and a half million is bronze. And under that, well, who knows, they might not just be around very long. So the first thing I want to do is generate a list of salespeople. So I'm just going to use the unique function. And with the unique function, it's a dynamic array function. Again, a newer one in Excel, and all I need to do is select the salesperson's column, close my parentheses, and it automatically spills down the list of unique salespeople. Now, I want to create a formula here just to do a calculation of the sum of the revenue for each model and use it to just as a verification of my formulas that I'll put using the let function and without using the let function. So I'm going to type equals sum ifs. My sum range is the revenue, comma. The criteria range is model, comma. And I'm going to lock cell K1 using the F4 key. And the other criteria range is salesperson and comma and the salesperson I'm going to reference is in cell K3, so I'll just type in K3, close my parentheses, hit enter, and now I can copy that down. However, since I'm referencing a dynamic array formula with the unique function, here in when I reference cell K3, I can put the hashtag after that, or the pound sign, hit enter, and Excel will automatically convert that to a dynamic array and spill those results down so I don't have to manually copy those down. And I'm going to copy this formula because we're going to use it several times in building the formulas that we have here. So in creating the formula without the let function, I'm going to use the ifs function and I'm going to say that formula, if it's greater than 5 million, then I want gold. If this formula is greater than 4 million, then I want silver. If that formula is greater than 2,500,000, then I want bronze. Else, if it's true, then I want to put Sia. Close my uh, quotes, close my parentheses, hit enter. And again, because I had that pound symbol after the reference of the unique function, it automatically spills down my results. Since this was under 4 million, they got bronze, over 5, gold, under two and a half, poor Jack. Uh, under five, they're silver. And above two and a half, they got bronze. So all these look correct. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this because we only needed that to test to, to make the formula for the no let function. I just wanted to make sure it worked properly. Now, how we're going to use the let function here. So the let function assigns names to calculation results. This allows storing intermediate calculations, values, or defining names inside a formula. So what we're going to do is type equals let, and I'm going to name my formula cal for calculation, 
and what is that value that I'm going to assign to that name, I'm going to paste in that formula that we copied earlier. Now I can either name another formula, function, whatever I want, or I can go ahead and start my calculation. And notice I can do that multiple times and I can do it in any order. I can have a name, a reference to that name, and then start a calculation, or I can have a name, a reference to that name, another name, another reference to that name, etc. I can pretty much do it in any order that I want. So now that we have our name and we have the formula that references that, now I can start our ifs function. And I can say if cal is greater than 5 million, then gold. If not, then if cal is greater than 4 million, then silver. Else, if Cal is greater than 2,500,000, then bronze, or if true, which has to be the last argument for an ifs function, then I want see ya, close my ifs function, close my let function, hit enter, and there's a problem with my formula. What did I do wrong? Oh, I just forgot to put in a comma there. Hit enter, and now it spills down the results of that formula. And notice it matches up exactly with what we had without the let formula. But if you see here, I have two length functions here, and the formula without using the let function, 315 characters, with it, only 172. So that formula is 45% shorter. And if we just take a look up here in the formula bar, you can see the difference in length between those two. And it's much easier to read and it actually functions a lot faster. I've seen the results of some tests using the let function. And if you have, say, hundreds of thousands of rows of data, you can significantly see the processing difference in time that it takes to run a function or a formula with the let function as opposed to one without. And that's how to use the let function in Excel. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so to any of the social networks you see here. Thanks a lot. Have a great day and happy Excelling.